Hello and welcome to this tech talk on the on the topic of trace minerals in laying hand nutrition. Uh, my name is Alice Hibbert, I'm the trace, trace mineral program manager for Asia for Tri Nutrition, and I'm very excited to be talking to you today on this topic. Firstly, we're just going to introduce our topic of the day. Um, it's important with trace mineral nutrition to remember a few different important factors. So trace minerals are vital um, and they have many important functions in within the body, within the metabolism. So um, much of the research in the topic of trace mineral nutrition is, is uh, can be dated when looking at requirements. And as a result, many of the values are published uh, to represent the nutritional requirements can be quite low. Uh, so, for example, maybe not taking into account genetic potential. Uh, um, so many different sources uh, on the market um, with varying bioavailability. So, for example, um, some of the NRC values, especially for poultry, are generally counted as quite low. Um, also. Uh, the levels of trace mineral in the typical feed ingredients in feed are generally quite low, uh, so we do not get much in our feed uh, from these. This defines the, the requirement to supplement trace minerals within the feed in order to make sure the animal is meeting its real nutritional requirement. So talking of the nutritional requirement, there are a couple of different things that actually affect this requirement within uh, commercial production such as stress, so for example, heat stress, as we'll talk about later, compromised welfare and environment, nutritional interactions, so there's some antagonistic reactions that can happen in the gut with other trace minerals, and also immune status and disease. So what is the disease status of the animal? And maybe the animal needs more trace mineral to support its immune function. When we talk about trace mineral in this presentation, this is defined by the amount of trace mineral which can be absorbed across the intestinal tract in order to uh, support all of these important functions. And worth mentioning at this point that the different trace mineral source can hugely affect this bioavailability or the availability of the trace mineral in the small intestine for absorption. So you can see here, um, that we have two different sources uh, of trace mineral. For example, our IntelliBond copper um, and a copper sulfate, which is the standard uh, industry uh, uh, supplementation source. We can see when we just go through this uh, um, animation here, the IntelliBond C uh, goes into the water. 30 minutes later, we see that it drops to the bottom and does not interact with water. Uh, whereas the copper sulfate goes into solution and produces this uh, blue liquid. This is indicative of negative interactions and this reactivity actually reduces the amount of trace mineral available for the animal uh, at the small intestine. So essentially, the bioavailability is very, very important when considering the trace mineral source that you're going to utilize in feed, which will then have a knock-on effect with how best the, the trace mineral can support these important bodily functions. So we can see this is just an, in, uh, uh, an image of some of the reactions that are happening. So the copper sulfate is being broken down into the uh, ligand, which is the sulfate, and the soluble trace mineral ion, which is the Cu2+. So, Bioavailability, what are the numbers that I'm talking about? Well, this is just an example of some work we did with our zinc product. If we compare the amount of, of zinc found in the tibia bone, when we feed three different types of, of trace mineral, we see huge, huge variances. So we see the sulfate at the bottom here. As we increase the intake of zinc, uh, we have uh, uh, increasing total tibia uh, a concentration. With sulfate, we see this is, this remains the lowest. And with organic sources and hydroxy sources, such as the intellibon zinc, we see much higher levels of recovery of zinc in the tibia. Uh, 
Okay, so on to uh, the actual topic of the day, looking at uh, egg production. So when we're looking at uh, commercial layer production, eggshell quality and eggshell egg numbers are the most important KPIs. So uh, there's many different ways, especially that trace minerals have an interaction with the quality of eggshells. So zinc, copper and manganese are the three most uh, important trace minerals and they have both catalytic and structural properties. So, for example, um, there's, there's various different enzymatic reactions which are required to make the components of the shell, which these trace minerals catalyze these enzymatic reactions. And zinc has a key role in carbonic and hydrase needed to produce the calcium carbonate in the shell. The copper is required for the synthesis of collagen, which can help make the egg itself and the membranes required uh, within the shell. And also the manganese, uh, is needed to help form the uh, uh, the the, um, uh, the the basis for the different trace minerals to be uh, deposited within the shell uh, uh, to ensure that uh, the the proteins in the eggshell membrane are actually deposited in eggshell production. So supplementation of these trace minerals uh, can help to improve eggshell breaking strength and decrease the percentage of broken eggs when we look practically. Okay, so just a quick recap and look at the eggshell structure itself. The trace minerals are a small but important component of the eggshell matrix. So we can see that we have the different layers here. Uh, we obviously see the, the cuticle, uh, uh, the, the palisades, uh, the shell membranes here below, and we see the pores running all the way through these, these layers. Um, we, when we actually analyze the eggshell itself, we see that the, uh, the trace minerals uh, are an important uh, part of these uh, eggshell uh, membranes and eggshells. When we look at the uh, uh, production cycle, of uh, of the laying hen, we see two very different and important uh, parts where the birds probably need more support. So essentially, we have the early lay or the pre-peak period here, and I've highlighted with this red box. Um, this is where the um, the birds are coming into lay. Uh, as the eggshell num egg, egg numbers are increasing, you potentially may have some eggshell quality issues. Um, and the birds are essentially uh, getting used to the new lay cycle. Then in late lay, we start to see um, a reduction in hen day egg production, um, which then starts to decline further and further towards the end of the lay cycle. Uh, this happens for a number of different reasons. So uh, declining gut health is one. So reduced ability to absorb nutrients, um, as well as uh, the bird uh, having to mobilize calcium from their, from its bones in order to actually form those eggshells, um, which then may in turn uh, reduce uh, egg production. Um, just some uh, headlines about the aging laying hen. So um, as the egg size increases, the eggshell decreases. A percentage of broken eggs uh, can, for example, be around 0.43% at 22 weeks uh, to 1.81% at 74 weeks of age. So we start to see a significant increase in, in broken eggs uh, and the percentage of total shell mass uh, can decrease from 9.8 uh, to 8.9 um, for between 22 and 57 weeks of age, for example. The eggshell thickness can significantly decrease as well in this period which then increases the possibility of, of breakages and some eggshell quality issues. As I said before, nutrient absorption can be impaired due to the deteriorating gut health, so lower calcium reabsorption and also shortening of the villus in themselves. I'm gonna go through uh, some of the validation work that we have done. Uh, so, First of all, I showed you that image, uh, which is actually looking at the, the lay cycle, uh, showing the, the egg laying curve. 
Well, first of all, we looked at um, when we supplement the uh, hydroxy trace minerals, the intellibond, versus the inorganic trace minerals um, during early lay. So we looked at between 20 and 24 weeks, which takes the birds through the onset of lay. Um, and we wanted to understand, will there be any improvement in performance with the hydroxy compared to the inorganic? Conclusion of this trial is that uh, we can uh, uh, support the early lay period. So we see that the number of cracked eggs with the inorganic trace minerals is significantly higher compared to the intellibond minerals. And the actual number of eggs laid um, and the hen day production uh, significantly increases. So yes, we can help those birds in early lay. Secondly, I just want to draw your attention to some of the work we've done in Australia, um, looking at more the late lay period. So again, it was a similar kind of a treatment. So we looked at inorganic versus the Intellibond products. Uh, we looked at zinc, copper and manganese in this case. And the interesting thing we did here is that we looked at cycling heat stress in a controlled environment to understand um, uh, do we have any mitigating effects on the negative impacts on uh, uh, egg production that we see during heat stress? So we started this trial at 45 weeks and pulled it through to the end of lay. And the findings were quite interesting. So first of all, we saw um, the same kind of improvements that we saw in our earlier trial in the UK. So the hen day egg production increased significantly and the feed conversion uh, to the egg feed conversion uh, significantly improved. But also the, the extra work we did on the heat stress uh, showed that when we correlated uh, for uh, when we correlated the uh, egg production uh, uh, when we looked at the maximum daily temperatures compared with the egg production percentage uh, for the inorganics, uh, we see a much stronger correlation with reducing egg production and increasing temperatures than we see with Intellibond uh, uh, versus high temperatures. So uh, there is less reduction in egg production with higher temperatures with Intellibond trace minerals. This is quite interesting. Um, and there's a few different mechanisms that we see might be responsible for this. So, for example, extra bioavailability. Uh, so uh, the trace mineral requirement increases in times of stress, if you remember which I discussed at the beginning of this presentation. So which source are we using? Are we optimising and increasing our bioavailability and the amount of trace mineral actually available to the birds? Also, there's a number of different nutritional uh, uh, mechanisms which zinc and copper can play a role in, for example, so uh, feed intake uh, and the animal's regulation of feed intake. There's a huge uh, uh, response, especially of zinc, in this process. Immune support, uh, zinc, copper, and manganese, in fact, can have a, a significant impact on immune support, um, helping to helping the immune cells to function uh, and defend the animal against different diseases. Oxidative status as well. So the zinc, copper and manganese's role in uh, superoxide dismutase catalysis and also nutrient digestibility. So there's some work out there looking at the role of zinc, for example, in the uh, digestibility of proteins. So we think uh, these different factors have uh, are playing a role. So these different mechanisms are playing a role in the results that we see. Uh, and it continues to be an interesting area that we're continuing with our, our research. So just to summarise, uh, trace minerals are nutritionally significant for the laying hen. The supplementation is needed in order to fulfil the animal's requirement. Uh, the trace minerals have many important roles to support commercial layer production, as I said at the end, like immune response, like, um, like supporting the uh, deposition of of the different minerals within the eggshell. Vital to ensure that the trace mineral source has maximum bioavailability and is therefore stable to 
prevent those reactions I showed you in that in, in earlier in my presentation. Uh, also, some of our studies show the superior source of zinc is able to further improve egg production and reduce cracked eggs. Um, highly bioavailable zinc source, especially, is able to mitigate the effects of heat stress on performance. Uh, and we see that there's a few different mechanisms and reasons proposed for this. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>